In today's video, uh, I'll be talking about the forces that is experienced by a ship at sea and in port. Particularly, I'll be talking about shearing forces, bending moments, hogging and sagging. Because when a ship is moving through the water, there are many forces that act on it. How they act is largely determined by the purpose of the ship uh, that was it was built for. So forces on a tugboat will be different from the forces, say, acting on a container ship. The types of forces that occur in waves are the same for every ship, but the magnitudes and points of action depend on the shape of the ship. And uh, shape of the ship below the ship, uh, below the waterline and above the waterline. The pattern of forces on a ship is very complicated and it largely depends on the following parameters. The weight of the empty ship, that is the light ship weight, the weight and distribution of the cargo, fuel, ballast, provisions, etc. Uh, the hydrostatic pressure on the hull applied by the water. When I talk about hydrostatic uh, pressure uh, or hydrodynamic forces resulting from the movement of the ship in the waves, I'm talking about both static as well as dynamic forces. So the Static means that the work done on an object is absorbed immediately, whereas dynamic means that the work done on an object is absorbed gradually. So examples of static forces is a swing with a child is slowly pushed forwards from rest. And this is a static movement because the force exerted on the swing is absorbed instantaneously. Or in the context of a ship, a crane on a ship is loaded a ship with cargo. As the cargo runner is stiffened, the ship lists slowly. This is a static movement because the ship absorbs the force that lifts the weight instantaneously. If I talk about dynamic forces, uh, if I talk about the same example as that of a crane, the crane has lifted the weight several meters now. The weight suddenly snaps and falls on the jetty. This causes the ship to list violently to the other side. The ship is unable to absorb the sudden change in weight and as a result, it acquires a dynamic motion. So uh, then we have the vibrations caused by engines, propeller, pitching, incidental forces caused by docking, collisions, ice. So these and other forces cause the ship to deflect. When the force disappears, the ship will regain its original shape. Every ship is different and some have more or less of the same flexibility. If, however, the forces exceed a certain limit, permanent deformation can result in a ship. We'll start with uh, the longitudinal strength of shearing forces. So when a ship is in calm water, the total upward force will equal the total weight of the ship. Uh, locally, this equilibrium will not be realized because the ship is not a rectangular homogeneous object. So the local differences between upward pressure and the local weight give rise to shearing force that lead to longitudinal tensions. That is why the shearing force is defined as the force that wants to shift the transverse plane from one part of the ship to another. So the submerged part of, submerged part of the ship uh, as you can see here in the picture as well, uh, clearly shows the difference in volume between the midship, the forward part and the aft ship. Uh, and this is the reason for the difference in the upward force. Uh, if you see in the drawing here, um, a part of the aft part of the ship is only shown here actually. And it is shown along with the shearing force near a bulkhead. So in this case, you can see the shearing force at the bulkhead is actually 400 minus 200, which is 200 tons. So the downward force causes a hogging movement of 400 tons by six meters, and the upward force causes a sagging movement of 200 tons by three meters. Now, what is hogging and sagging? I'll discuss it uh, later on as well. So the bending moment of the bulkhead here is about 2,400 tons meter, that is six times 400 minus 600 tons meter, which is 200 times three, which is equal to about 1,800 tons meter. And this is a hogging because this is happening in the uh, aftmost part of the ship. Now the longitudinal forces occur because the weight of the ship or the weights in the ship are not homogeneous in the forward and aft direction. They are not of the same quantity, same weight. And, the, and also it occurs because the upward force differs due to the shape of the underwater body. So because the underwater body's shape is different uh, along the length of the ship, the weight of the water acting on it uh, or the force of the water acting on it also starts to differ along the uh, length of the ship. So you can see here that uh, in this diagram you can see or the previous diagram you could see that the, the there were some black arrows uh, which represented the upward pressure 
and the weight of the ship and the res the red arrows gave the resultant uh, per section of the ship now here you can see how the separate compartments would float uh, the dashed lines here are actually uh, giving the actual draft of each of these departments so if i go into the diagram here you can see here how the black arrows give the resultant shearing forces between the different compartments and the red arrows are giving the resultant per section all right so this is how the shearing forces so i'll go into bending moments now so you can see here in the diagram how the bending moments and shearing forces are continuously changing along a ship's uh, length so as an example you can see a rectangular vessel is used which is divided into say three compartments a b and c now what you see on your screens are figures 1 2 and 3 in which uh, both outer compartments are filled with cargo uh, if i change the diagram and i show you some other diagram in diagram 4 5 and 6 the inner compartment uh, which is the middle compartment actually compartment b is filled with cargo so in the first three you have the a and b a and c compartments filled with cargo whereas in uh, the diagram 4 5 and 6 you have uh, the middle compartment filled with cargo now in figures 2 uh, and 5 the vessel is on a wave crest and in figures 3 and 6 you can see the vessel is in a trough so the upward pressures keep changing because the wave is moving along the barge and the downward forces however stay the same so the up and downward forces per compartment are shown here as vectors in terms of the arrows you can see the arrows and the forces that each compartment is experiencing so the mean resultant per compartment is given as a vector as you can see in the lines below or the diagrams below the curves below so the load curve gives the difference of the up and downward forces per meter at each point on the baseline and the sum of the areas above the baseline and the areas below the baseline should be equal the shearing force curve gives a uh, sum of the shearing forces on the right part produced by the left side going from left to right if the direction of the force is changing from upward to downward or vice versa the shearing force curve will change from rising to falling or vice versa so the shearing force curve has an extreme value at the points where the direction of the force is changing converting the load curve to a shearing force curve is called summing the sum of the areas above the baseline has to equal the sum of the areas below the baseline so the shearing forces are expressed in tons and the bending moment is determined by summing of the shearing forces going from left to right the bending moment is expressed in tons meter if the shearing force curve changes from rising to falling or vice versa the bending moment will bend at the bending point from hollow to round or vice versa when the shearing force curve crosses the baseline the bending moment line will change from rising to falling or vice versa the ship will take the shape of the bending moment line if this has only one extreme or maximum value what you see on your screen here is that you can see around the half height of the rectangular cross section of the barge vessel there is something called a neutral zone at that level there are no tensions or compression stresses further to the top and to the bottom the stresses have a higher value uh, then we talk about hogging so uh, situation in figures 1 and 2 is called a hogging condition Uh, hogging is defined as the vertical deflection of a ship's hull in longitudinal direction where the hull midships is bent upwards as a result of the cargo distribution because you can see there is more cargo at the ends of the vessel uh, and the and also it depends on the way the way a ship is supported by the wave at sea so depending on the cargo distribution as well as how the sea waves act on the ship's hull or the ship's length uh, the length of the ships so that is called hogging where there is more weight on the ends and less weight in the middle uh, similarly we have the situation here in figures uh, 4 5 and 6 and also if you go back you will see in figure 3 as well uh, you can see sagging here because there is more weight in the middle part so that's why sagging is called the vertical deflection of a ship's hull in longitudinal direction where the hull midships is bent downwards because of the extra weight in the midship section and as a result of cargo distribution and or the way the ship is supported at sea so again here the the waves or the sea waves again play a role and how it is acting along the ship's hull all right so i think these are the main forces that are experienced by the ship during its movement um, and then uh, i in my further videos i'll explain how uh, 
the the stress taken by the ship's plate and the is then counteracted by way of ship construction so because of these forces that keep acting on the ship you cannot avoid these forces they keep acting on the ship's plate uh, there could be deformation there could be uh, structural deformity which is not safe for the ship's construction or for the ships to sail for a long time and therefore uh, to counteract for these forces and elements we have to strengthen the ship's plates the ship's structures uh, and uh, in my previous video i have talked about uh, how the stiffening of ship's plating is done in different parts of the ship so please make sure you watch that as well uh, the the link to that video is in the description section below uh, in my further videos i'll talk about some local stresses like uh, panting stress pounding stresses and vibration stresses so you get more idea about the different kind of uh, stresses and forces as experienced by the vessel thanks for now and bye